when he first comes in, he didn't have a life anymore. You were kind of diagnosed with narcolepsy, right? Mm -hmm. You'd be falling asleep. Yes. Yeah. So when you start in the office, you're being driven to the office mm -hmm. because you couldn't drive. Yeah. They didn't trust that you could drive without falling asleep, without losing yeah. consciousness and things like that. Welcome to My Pods Podcast. I'm Dr. Joe Schneider, and after 35 years as a functional neurologist, a personal journey through stroke recovery and helping thousands of patients, I'm here to share breakthrough solutions for POTS and neurological wellness. From getting out of bed in the morning to rebuilding your nervous system, this is your guide to understanding and overcoming neurological challenges. Let's begin this journey to recovery together. So this is uh, the Hope Brain and Body Recovery Center. I'm Dr. Joe Schneider. I'm your host, and this is our patient, Darnell. And, um, you know, we do these videos to educate people about what we do and how we do it. And uh, we're a comprehensive care center. Would you agree? Yes, very much so. <laughs> very much so, right. And uh, a lot of times when patients come in, they don't really believe that they're going to have so much progress from when they started, mm -hmm. okay? And so traumatic brain injury is the topic here. Uh, we had a patient before, where we talked about Ernie. Ernie was having a traumatic brain injury and um, we went through his story and now we're gonna go through Darnell's story. So why don't you start from the top? What happened uh, to give you a traumatic brain injury? Well, it started one day as Ryan, Ryan's kids there and we're not quite sure what all happened, but yeah, I think maybe I drove over a rock. It was pretty big or hit something hard. Whacked my head good in the corner of the cab. And as far as what happened from there, not quite sure what all happened, but mm -hmm. they, they're not exactly sure what all happened. I, I really don't know much. So yeah, it was, so you, you, you were unconscious. I was unconscious. Uh -huh. For a little while, that happened in the evening. I figure around seven or seven thirty. They found me toward nine thirty. Wasn't making a whole lot of sense. Okay. Somehow I drove the skid steer back into the shop. Don't know how that worked. You don't know how that happened. You don't remember that. <laughs> I, think, uh -huh. I think the angel was yeah. guiding that the thing. The angel was guiding you. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and. Took me into the hospital. I didn't really know too much. They said I kind of came to it like two o'clock next morning mm -hmm. or so and started talking a little bit more sense than what I was. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was a long recovery from there, just trying to, trying to get my rest. So how long after your initial injury did you finally see us? I was August that that happened, and when did I, I'm not exactly sure when I started coming here. It was pretty close to that, right? Yeah. It was at least 10 months. At least 10 months. Okay. So um, 10 months after the injury, you come to the office, and you were still not really aware. Not very good. No? No, things were going better for a time, but then they started going downhill again mm -hmm. and yeah that's, that's when we started coming here yeah so you came here one of the things that was happening with you is that uh you were kind of diagnosed with narcolepsy right mm -hmm. you'd be falling asleep yes yeah so when you start in the office you're being driven to the office mm -hmm. because you couldn't drive yeah they didn't trust that you could drive without falling asleep, without losing yeah. consciousness and things like that. Okay. And so um, we started a comprehensive program of doing uh, functional medicine testing um, and then going through our entire office with uh, neurofeedback, gyrostim, right? Mm -hmm. Oxygen with exercise, uh, virtualis, harmonics, everything we had, we threw at you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he's a strong 
individual. And um, at first, you, you really weren't getting anywhere for the first, like, few weeks at least, right? Seemed a little that way. It seemed, yeah. And then uh, you also had some chronic low back pain. that. Um, so we treat the whole person. So we started treating low back also. And then around halfway, we started to see some really good changes happening with you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're more aware. Yeah. Yeah, you could figure things out. And then um, driving. Driving became something that uh, you could do again, yes. right? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. So during the day, do you fall asleep at all? No, nah, once in a while I get tired taking that yeah. part way through the day, but right, I'm not fearing that I'm going to fall asleep or something crazy like that. Crazy like that. Now, um, you you're involved in farming, right? Well, more in a rental business. Okay, but yeah, yeah, but equipment. That, yes, you know equipment. That, equipment. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, would you say you work in a light industry, a heavy industry, or a medium industry? But I would say more. A little hard to describe that, whether it's medium or heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but you work hard. You work yeah, a lot, right? I definitely try and do a lot in a day. Yeah, and a lot of equipment, handling a lot of equipment again, and things like that, right? Yeah. Okay. And so his awareness has gone up like really, really, um, I would say almost to 80 to 90 percent, maybe even 100 percent of what you were before. I wouldn't say I'm quite 100 percent of what I was, but uh, it's way, way better. Way better. Way better. Than okay. So if you would say down 100 percent, what would you want to happen with you to get you to 100 percent? What would be that, the, the part of it that? It's not quite there yet. Well, I'm more tired in the middle of the day than I used to used be. Used to be, okay. And I used to be, come evening, I could still be on working if I wanted to. That's definitely has changed. Mm -hmm. Comes, gets the evening time. It's it's time to it's time to quit. Okay. It's not like you can go run through the night or anything. Run <laughs> through the night, right? And so how old are you now? Would you mind sharing your age? I'm 26. 26, right? So if I was 26, I would share my age with everybody. But <laughs> so it's not, it's not, I'm not there anymore. So uh, fatigue is still part of it, but not the kind of fatigue that you had before where, like, in the morning you could just be sitting and then fall asleep. Yeah, it was like in the morning I could just fall asleep. Right. I'd roll out of bed, and huh, next thing I wanted to do is go back to sleep. Go back now, to sleep, right. Now I want to get up and go to work. You could, good. And then um, how do you sleep through the night? What's your sleep like? I'd say I sleep very well. Very well, okay. So when it, when he started out, we did our diagnostic testing. We do two different types of QEGs. We do um, a balance test called a CAPS test. We do a Norline test where we look at eye movements um, and, and balance. And then we do a uh, vital scan where we look at his QEG or EKG and blood pressure on his arm, pulse ox on his fingers, blood pressure on the legs and pulse ox. So you just did your final diagnostics, right? Yes. It takes about an hour or more to do the final diagnostics. And so we, when we, we start a patient, we do the diagnostics, then we did it halfway, right? And we look at the numbers, and then we do it at the end, look at the numbers. So um, I would feel that he is going to continue to progress once he gets back in his life, right? And yeah. you're going to come back in about three months, and we're going to do your brain scans over again, mm -hmm. all right? And what we'll see is as he gets back to his normal life and doing the normal things, or any injuries or anything like that, that he will be doing better. He'll be doing better with his brain scans, and we'll see continued improvement, especially since he's 26. Uh, the more he gets back to his life and the more he, he does, the better he'll be. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. So, God willing, uh, another great case. Um, 
where where we got his life back. And I'll tell you what, when he first comes in, he didn't have a life anymore. And he was just wondering, like, what can I do to get back to work, right? And back to family, back to driving and so forth. And so another, another great success story where multiple things are happening with the patient and multiple therapies were used to start to reintegrate his system, right? So we know that when you have a brain trauma, you lose neurons, you lose interconnections. So you don't have as much brain real estate that you had before. When a patient gets better, we get back interconnections, we get back neurons, and we make the brain stronger so that you can function better. And that's how we do it. So um, I thank you very much. Thank you for joining us on My Pots Podcast. If you're looking for more support, visit us at hopebraincenter.com or follow our journey on TikTok where we share daily insights and inspiration. Remember, healing is possible. I'm living proof. I'm Dr. Joseph Schneider, and I'll see you next time as we continue exploring paths to recovery.